Welcome back, Sebastian here. So, uh, moving on from Alfa Romeo to the other Alfa, Alfa Tauri. So, uh, first taking a look at their drivers, and of course one of the notable points about Alfa Tauri this year was that they used four drivers. So of course, the original pairing to start the year was uh, Yuki Tsunoda and Nick De Vries. Of course, De Vries gets dropped mid-season uh, after the British Grand Prix and was replaced with Daniel Ricciardo. Ricciardo has two Grand Prix and two free practice sessions before breaking his wrist and being replaced by Liam Lawson uh, for five races before then uh, coming back in for the final five races of the year. So kind of a mess when looking at the driver head to head as there was basically four different drivers, but I'll break it down as simply as possible. So starting off with uh, Yuki Tsunoda, 17 points, uh, the only driver who raced uh, through the full season. Average finishing position, 12.4. Uh, qualifying head-to-head, -head, so of the 22 qualifying battles, he won 17. Average uh, average uh, starting position, 14.1, and average spot on my power ranking is 11.1. Then when we get to Nick DeVries, of course, only drove the first half of the season, uh, well, basically first 10 races. Average finishing position, 15.5, uh, so that was about three positions less than Sonoda's average over the year. Although, of course, notably, when looking at these kinds of comparisons, uh, especially when we get over to here, as I should probably just go over there now. Um, the Alpha Tower card did improve quite a bit through the season. So, for example, for the first two, uh, for the first 11 races, average qualifying position 15.4 and only two points, both for Sonoda. Uh, th from, races, from race 12 to the end of the season, uh, qualifying position improved by two, 13.4, and they got 23 points. So massive improvement in terms of points the second half of the season. So uh, when comparing DeVries statistics in particular with Ricardo and Lawson, it's kind of unfair given that it's quite clear that that car, that car that he drove was much worse than the car that Ricardo or Lawson drove. Uh, conversely, comparing Ricardo's uh, and Lawson's statistics with Sonoda's, uh, Sonoda had to deal with a much worse car for half the season, uh, whereas Ricardo and Lawson basically got a pretty good car uh, through for their stints. So De Vries, no points, average finishing position 15.5, like I said. Qualifying head-to-head, 1-2, -head, uh, lost 8. Average qualifying gap, 2, point, uh, two tenths of a second, roughly. Average starting position, 16.6, .6, and average spot on my power ranking is 19.6. So he was basically one of the worst drivers, I thought, through his 10 10 race stint this year. Basically, it was him and Sargent alternating for 20th, 20th spot uh, most weekends. Uh, then we get to Ricardo, 6 points, uh, all of them from the Mexican Grand Prix, average finishing position 12, qualifying head-to-head 1-3, -head, uh, loss 4, actually had the advantage over Sonoda uh, in terms of qualifying gap, 0.09. Uh, so very, very close, basically dead even, um, which is definitely a good sign for next year as with a full year winter uh, preparation, a whole uh, you know set, uh, winter session, winter test session to get prepare. Uh, qualifying should be pretty good for Ricardo next year. Average starting position 12.5 and average spot on my power ranking is 15.7. Then we get to Liam Lawson, two points of course, uh, and actually in the points head to head, just comparing the races that him and Sonoda did together, technically beat Sonoda there. Uh, did have a bit of luck there though overall I felt. Uh, average finishing position 12.2, not far behind Ricardo. Uh, qualifying head to head, zero to five. So technically on the official stats, you'll see that it was one to four. But because of the way that I choose to uh, calculate qualifying statistics, for example, if a driver can't set a time in Q3, I'll go and look at the Q2 times. Uh, and if that said driver was ahead of the other driver, then of course they would still win the battle. But if it went the other way, I would use that instead. Um, and we'll talk, we'll talk about that a bit more when we get to Red Bull. But uh, qualifying gap with some of the outliers removed, uh, about three tenths of a second. So a bit worse than DeVries. But honestly, for Lawson, with no preparation as a complete rookie, it's not the end of the world. Uh, average starting position, 13.8, pretty good. A bit below Ricardo. Uh, and average spot, my power rankings, 15.2. A bit hard, higher than Ricardo. Um, but that being said, I think uh, he equated himself pretty well. And I think the expectations were quite a bit lower for him than for Ricardo. And for Ricardo, he had some pretty bad luck through the, the end of the year, like the tire, flying tire landing on his car. Uh, for example, all of the uh, tear-offs stuck, getting stuck in his brake ducts. 
So um, overall, I think for next year, of course, the two drivers next year will be Sonoda and Ricardo. Um, hopefully no more crazy seat changes for next year, which I think is a decent lineup. Um, you know, I would have liked to see Lawson get a chance, but I think with things how, being things how they are, being how they are, uh, there wasn't really a space for him. Now, looking at Alpha Tower, the team, and how they've done the last four years, 2020, 107 points. Seventh in the Constructors, a pretty good year with uh, Gasly and Kvyat. Uh, 1.394. Uh, 1.398 was their average pole gap. Uh, 2021, uh, real, a good step forward, 142 points, six in the constructors. Uh, their average pole gap was 0.744, so less than a second, which is very, very good, uh, especially at that time. Uh, of course, uh, they had a, a rookie Yuki Sonoda that year, and of course, you can make a good argument that uh, Sonoda kind of having a pretty poor rookie season did cost them fifth in the constructors championship. 2022, first year of the new regulations, a massive step backwards, 35 points, ninth in the constructors, their average pull gap basically doubled uh, from 2021, but of course, having a really poor car with the new set of regulations, that can happen, uh, 1.583 seconds. Then this year, second year of the regulations, I think the first half of the season was quite poor. Um, like I said, only two points in the first half of the season, but they basically made the decision mid-year that going forward, they would use more Red Bull parts. And this is something that's definitely been a bone of contention with some of the teams like Mercedes and Ferrari about concerns about, uh, given how dominant Red Bull is, uh, if Alpha Tauri, with whatever name they use next year, something Racing Bulls, I think it's likely to be, you know, how good will they be with those parts? Uh, and that's something that, you know, I think is going to be one of the big uh, question marks going into next year. But uh, 23 points, 8th in the Constructors, and average pull gap of 1.169 seconds, about 4 tenths better than last year. And with kind of this convergence that we expect to see uh, next year, I think if in a best case scenario where no one really builds a super dominant car next year, uh, I think there's an, an outside chance that all 10 teams are basically within a second for this kind of average pull gap uh, statistic. I think there'll be races where there are cars outside of a second, but I think p potentially over the course of the full season, uh, that's impossible. Of course, uh, last year's Alpha Tower, like I mentioned, uh, the rumor is, I don't think it's been officially announced, but uh, they will be basically called Racing Bulls and similar to Racing Point. They'll have some kind of title sponsor and then it will be something something racing. So uh, that's my review of Alpha Tower. I think overall not a great year. I think between the drivers, driver chaos, the fact that uh, their points tally went down, uh, I think was not a great sign. I think the fact that they basically we're planning to be a more independent team, built to make more, use more of their own parts, and the fact that they've kind of had to uh, go backwards to make a U-turn on that decision, I think was not great overall. Of course, eighth in the constructors is better than last year, um, but still, I think they'll be aiming for better. Kind of seventh or sixth, I think, uh, like they had in 2020, 2021, I think would be ideally where they would like to be. So uh, that's all for my review of uh, Alpha Tower's 2023 F1 season. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.